If you are going through it, if you are suffering, if you feel like you can barely see the light at the end of the tunnel, and you're also alone or you know just spending more time alone you are most likely going through a spiritual awakening and if you let yourself you will come out of the other side so much better so much more beautiful so much more positive and optimistic about life than ever before <music> to my youtube channel if you are new here my name is munira okay make sure you like you subscribe you share and you comment and you do all that good stuff because that helps me with the youtube algorithm it lets youtube know that you like my stuff you like my videos and it also pushes my content out to other people who may enjoy my content as well so honestly i feel so calm <laughs> I feel so calm and centered and serene and it's probably because I meditated today, did my yoga practice and I got all cute, okay? <laughs> but I'm really excited about today's YouTube video because I am doing a deep dive into my spiritual journey and how I became so spiritual and everything that encompasses spirituality for me. There's a main theme to this conversation, which I'll dive into that later, but Let's just jump right in and begin, okay? So, as you know, my name is Munira, and when I was, you know, in my mom's belly, my mom and dad were going back and forth about what my name should be. My mom wanted my name to be Yasmin, which is my middle name, and my dad was like, no, I want her name to have more meaning, because Yasmin means jasmine, which is a flower. So, Yasmin means flower, and my dad was like, no, I want her name to have more meaning. And so he chose Munira, and Munira means one who enlightens, it means bright, and you know, like, almost like a star, <laughs> period. And I just love that story so much because my name encompasses who I am, and every single time someone asks me what my name means and I tell them, they're like, look at you, enlighten me, and I'm like, yeah. Growing up, I didn't really like my name only because it was hard to pronounce for other people, but I love my name now and I'm so grateful. And I say that because that kind of marked, you know, my spiritual journey. One who enlightens, one who shares knowledge and, you know, is wise. That's a big name to hold at such a young age, you know? And so I've always felt like my dad kind of knew me because my dad passed away when I was four. So I always felt like my dad knew me, like even though I don't know him very well in the sense that I didn't get to spend a lot of time with him here on earth in the 3D realm, I feel like on a spiritual connection and on a soul connection, my dad just knew. My dad knew my purpose. My dad knew how special I am. And not saying other people aren't special, but he just knew, he just knew. As a child, I grew up Muslim. So my dad converted to Islam before he met my mom and um, my mom's parents converted to Islam when she was like a little baby. So I was raised Muslim. My dad was much more strict than my mom. My mom always said like, I'm Muslim, but I'm more spiritual than religious. And I kind of adopted that as well. So I wasn't raised super strict, like when it came to Islam. My mom didn't make me cover my hair with a hijab. I prayed uh, until I kind of stopped. Um, I did participate in Ramadan, but it wasn't very strict. Although I wouldn't say that my mom gave me the space to explore other religions and other spiritual beliefs, I felt okay to do that in private. <laughs> I'm a Gemini, so when I was younger, people would hear like, oh, you're a Gemini, and they would automatically like not like me or like give me a stank eye because you know, Geminis have a bad rep, which I understand the underdeveloped ones are a little crazy, but through that, I started to like, you know, get into horoscopes because I kind of felt like that helped me understand myself better. I, I felt really misunderstood as a kid. I felt like a black sheep. I felt like I just, I always felt super misunderstood. I didn't feel like I really fit in with anyone. I didn't fit in with my friend group. I didn't fit in with my cousins. Like I just felt really isolated sometimes, even though I'd be around people. I say that to say I found astrology and it started off with horoscopes, daily horoscopes. I would read those. Naturally with time, I dove a little deeper. I started to learn about my rising sign, my moon sign, like, and just kind of reading the whole birth chart. And that opened my mind so much because 
it really helped me understand myself i was like oh this makes sense like and some people would find out i was a gemini and then they'd say oh i like you even though you're a gemini i don't really like gemini's and then i realized <laughs> i have a lot of earth placements specifically virgo but that kind of helps ground my air energy because i have a lot of air and earth placements oh my god there's a beautiful feather flying around you see the symbolism you see the symbolism <laughs> as i'm saying air energy anyways let me come down <laughs> so yeah in middle school and in high school i was into astrology and I would say in college is when I found out about my moon sign, my rising sign, and like just really being able to read a birth chart and learn so much more about the signs and even degrees, like all, like that happened in college. But when I got to college, I went through one of my first like heartbreaks. This gets me into the whole spiritual journey and like the bigger message at large is that pain and suffering is necessary to begin a spiritual journey. I think it's very rare for someone to begin a spiritual journey from a place of happiness and a place of contentment because there's really no need to seek anything. And when you are suffering and when you are in pain, that is when you start to search for something bigger than yourself, something bigger than this earth, something bigger than what you can see. You start to search for something that the eye can't show you. That is how my first spiritual awakening began, at least my first spiritual awakening as an adult. And so I was in college, it was my sophomore year, and I had gone through like one of my first heartbreaks. When I look back, it wasn't a heartbreak. It's something that they call, I think they call it cathexis. If you've read Bell Hooks All About Love, she talks about this. Essentially, this word means like it's a bond with someone, just like a physical bond or like an intimate bond. It's not love, but it's just a deep connection to someone. And I had experienced, you know, my first little heartbreak. And around this time it was summertime and my best friend she was going home for the summer i was staying in our college town so it was just me and then we had roommates but we did not get along with them at all so i just felt super alone and isolated and the person that i was heartbroken over was also leaving so i just really felt so alone and i grew up sharing a room with my sister literally all my life like i was sharing a room in college when i um, moved in freshman year i did the dorming thing and i shared a room with someone and even sophomore year of college i was still sharing a room i was sharing a room with my best friend so i didn't really get to spend a lot of time by myself i was always around other people and i was always trying to do something and this gets me into the second thing that is required for a spiritual awakening or just like beginning a spiritual journey is isolation. So pain and isolation are two major things that kind of like, they're like a catalyst to your spiritual journey and your spiritual growth. So here I am all alone, I'm heartbroken. I don't really have anyone that I can, you know, be around all the time. And so I start spending a lot of time by myself. And although at first it was very hard, I started to find new things to do. I started to pick up hobbies. I started to draw during that time. I started to work out more. I started to eat better. And within two months, I dropped 10 pounds. Mind you, I had been trying to lose weight like my whole life. Like a lot of people around me were very fixated on being thin and you know, they were fixated on my body. So they made a lot of comments about my body that I internalized. And so I spent a lot of time trying to lose weight. I wasn't even actively trying then. I was kind of just like following the routine and I dropped 10 pounds. So by the time junior year rolled around, I looked so good. <laughs> like I looked really good. I also started to really enjoy being alone. And at first I didn't enjoy being alone because I have a lot of thoughts. I'm very mercurial. I talk about this all the time. I have a lot of air placements. So my mind is always going. And and sometimes I didn't want to address the things that my mind was saying and that was for you know various reasons sometimes we speak to ourselves very unkindly and I was being very rude to myself and I didn't want to address it I didn't want to address the heartbreak I didn't want to address anything but being alone forced me to so during that time I was able to reflect I was able to really feel my emotions and process them for the first time and not have someone tell me I was being dramatic or that, you know, to get over it. I was able to sulk and it felt really good. 
and I just started to really enjoy being by myself. And so that was my first spiritual awakening because that isolation period helped me cultivate my own relationship with God, my own relationship with myself. And it showed me that I'm actually not afraid of being alone and that there's so much happiness that you can create just by being by yourself. My second spiritual awakening happened right after I graduated college, and this was right before the pandemic. So during the pandemic is when I had my second spiritual awakening, which I think a lot of us had a spiritual awakening during that time because we were not allowed to live life like we were used to. So we spent a lot of time inside, we spent a lot of time by ourselves or just, you know, with the same people. So I think a lot of us went through a spiritual awakening during that time, but by this time I had already had my own room and I was used to being alone and comfortable being alone, so that was really good. But during the pandemic, I had a job as a customer service representative with Progressive, and I had my computer screens, I was at home, and I was taking calls back to back to back for eight hours straight. It was terrible. To this day, that is the worst job that I have ever had. Like, I don't know, just sitting somewhere, staring at a screen, and getting calls back to back all day, was too much for me and then the managers they were they were so um they would micromanage me so my supervisor would micromanage me they would listen to my calls and I'd have it just it just was bad so I didn't like my job and my roommate my best friend she went back home and so it was just me in the apartment mind you it's a pandemic I can't go out and see my friends like I normally would because there's a stay at home you know order in place and I am working this job that I don't like. Also, I find out that my grandma is really sick and my grandma is someone, I could cry right now, let me, let me breathe. My grandma was someone, <laughs> not me about to cry on camera. I don't care, we're being vulnerable, but I just didn't expect this. But my grandma was someone who was just like very important to me. I spent a lot of time with her as a kid because um, my mom was always, you know, away working or going to school. And so I spent a lot of time with her. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't mean to laugh. It's just, <laughs> I didn't mean to get this emotional. But my grandma was sick. And so here I am, you know, I'm at this point, I'm not enjoying myself. Like I'm not having a good time. And so I decided to try yoga. So I started to watch videos from Yoga with Adrian, and I would do that before work. I would do it on my balcony because I had a balcony, thankfully. I would do that. I would listen to the birds chirp. I would, you know, feel the sun on my skin and I would talk to God because I was in this low phase again. Like I was in this low state again. I was alone, I was suffering, and I would just be like, God, like, please help me through this. Please help me understand. Please, you know, guide me, show me, show me what to do, show me where to go because I didn't have any answers. I didn't know what to really do. And yoga really, really, really helped me connect deeper with myself. It helped me, you know, deepen my breath and like really connect to who I am. Cause this body isn't me. It's me right now in this lifetime, but it's not my soul. It's not, you know, it's not the light. Cause I feel like we're all just little balls of light. You know, just little balls of light shining around, playing little characters. And so yoga helps me deepen my relationship with myself and my relationship with source. God, I use source, God, the universe, all interchangeably. Like they're all the same thing to me. I, I forgot. Also during this time, I was going through some other stuff. I was going through another heartbreak and it wasn't even a heartbreak because I actually couldn't wait to get rid of this person. Like I had been praying to God, like help me get rid of this person. And I finally found out some information that I needed to find out so I could block this person and go. That was the first person I've ever like ghosted for real and i was dealing with that and this person you know was very manipulative they gaslit me a lot and so what i was processing after finally removing them from my life was was any of it real like how can you miss someone that you actually don't like and i was just processing all of these mixed emotions all while working a job that i don't like all while being alone all while dealing with the fact that my grandma is literally like dying and 
I was also getting rid of friendships. Like <laughs> it all happened in that same, within the same six to eight months, all of that happened. I dropped a guy, I dropped friends that I felt like weren't actually my friends. You know, like those frenemy type of vibes, those competitive vibes. I am not a competitive person at all. Like I could care less. I care mostly about me. So I dropped those competitive friends. I dropped that competitive guy. And again, I'm just by myself and I'm going through the motion. And so then um, my grandma ends up passing away and that crushes me. It honestly crushes my whole family. My whole family has never been the same since she passed. And at that point, I was like, oh my God, like what is gonna happen? My family was in shambles. And again, I turned to God, I turned to source, I turned to the universe and I turned to my grandma. And I remember there was one night specifically when I was bawling my eyes out and I was calling out to her and I was like, grandma, like, please visit me, please help me because there's so much going on and I don't know how to process it. And that night she visited me in my dream and I know that she did that on purpose because I was really going through it. And that just like opened my eyes to the fact that like we are so much more connected than we think. There is so much more going on like that we can't see. I don't, <laughs> I didn't mean to get emotional, but clearly she meant and means a lot to me. But yeah, that's what I learned like, oh shit, like you can actually connect with spirits and angels and ancestors like you can connect with your ancestors you can connect with your spirit guides because that's actually what happened and my dreams at this time were very vivid and very intense and i've even had some prophetic dreams during this time and this is what i was like oh shit like <laughs> i might be on to something you know like i might have a connection to source <laughs> I also got into tarot at this time. I remember my sister sent me a video by Tarot by Bronx. I love you, Tarot by Bronx, if you've ever watched this. Tarot by Bronx follows me on Twitter, but anyways, I found their channel and their content resonated with me so much. I was like, what the fuck? Like, I actually was shook. And so then I started to dive into tarot. And so I would use tarot to try to speak to my grandma, which I connected with her multiple times. And I definitely consider her one of my spirit guides. She was just different, y'all. Like she was someone who understood how to create peace while chaos is surrounding you. She was so, so non-judgmental. Like she didn't judge a soul. She was so caring. She took in so many people. Like I don't want to say she took in strays, but she took in strays. Like she took in people who weren't related to us at all. And like, she was just the best human being. So my grandma passes away and I quit my job and I decide to move back home with my mom. I never thought I would live with my mom again. My mom, <laughs> I love my mom, but I just feel like we have a better relationship when we don't live together. But you know how sometimes your parents can like want the best for you, but they only want what they think is the best for you. Yeah. So I ended up moving in back home with my mom. And during this time I was just isolated again. We had moved to this small town that is literally like in the boonies and I didn't know anyone but my family but also like I was just in this moment of healing I had dropped friends I had dropped a lover I had lost my grandma I quit my job and I just was in this moment of reflection and I just let myself be alone. I would literally wake up, I would go to the park, and I would just lay in the sun. I would talk to God, I would pull tarot cards, I would charge my crystals, I would talk to the insects and the trees, and I was really on my hippie vibes, and I still do that, I'm about to do that after this video. But I really like, I don't know, I just got in touch with God and with the universe, the life force energy that we have on this earth and that we're created from. I just really tapped in and tuned in and all of that was like a spiral into everything else. Like once I was tapped in, I was tapped in. Then I got into Abraham Hicks. If you know about Abraham Hicks, tapped in, tuned in, turned on, like period. Okay, we really about this. <laughs> so I got into Abraham Hicks, which I love Abraham Hicks. I have never resonated with a type of spiritual belief more than I have resonated with asking it is given and all of the abraham hicks books if you are interested in reading abraham hicks books i have them all linked in my amazon storefront under books that will elevate you 
I think I actually want to do a video on that on like the books that helped elevate me and just kind of like change me just books that helped me transform spiritually I definitely think I'll do a YouTube video on that but I got into Abraham Hicks I started learning about sacred sexuality um, I think the woman's name is Maya um, I haven't watched one of those in a long time but I got into that and I got into tarot, which now, if you don't know, I read tarot. And I actually read tarot for people and it resonates and it feels really good just to be able to help people. Like, I don't do it very often because it does take a lot of energy out of me. But when I do it, it just feels so nice to be able to help guide people, especially being a projector. I love guiding people. And if y'all don't know what any of these terms mean, this is all from human design. And if you'd like a video about human design and how I got into that, I'm more than happy to share that too. But yeah, it's just what I realized is you can't decide when you want to go through a spiritual awakening. That just happens. And when it does happen, it's normally because you've experienced some type of pain, very Scorpio energy, Scorpionic, very Scorpio death and rebirth energy. So when you are suffering and when you're alone, you really got to be in pain and got to be suffering in some way. So you look outside of yourself for, you know, answers. And then you have to be alone so that you can listen. A lot of the times when we're surrounded by a lot of people, they tell us their opinions and you really don't get to sit with yourself and listen to what your body is actually telling you and what downloads you're receiving from God and from source and from the universe because God is always speaking to you if you're listening. Like the universe is always sending you signs and signals to direct you on your path and if you're always listening, you will see it and you will be aware. But those two things I would say were the main aspects of like spiritual awakening. So if you are going through it, if you are suffering, if you feel like you can barely see the light at the end of the tunnel and you're also alone or, you know, just spending more time alone, you are most likely going through a spiritual awakening. And if you let yourself, you will come out of the other side so much better, so much more beautiful, so much more positive and optimistic about life than ever before. Deepening my spiritual practices and diving into spirituality and creating a spiritual belief that works for me has transformed me in so many ways. Like, I have gotten so much more pretty from that. <laughs> Not that that's the only thing that matters, but like legit, I have gotten prettier from ascending. I have gotten more knowledgeable from ascending. I have better discernment. I choose better friends. I choose better lovers. Like I make better decisions for myself. I take care of myself differently because I have learned and I have grown and I have expanded. And I'm so excited because I'm actually currently going through another spiritual awakening, which I'm not comfortable speaking about yet. But I'm just really excited to see where I'll end up at the end of this journey. Of course, the journey never ends, but you do go through periods. And I am just so excited to see where I'll be at at the end of this period because I think it's really about to crack me open. And yes, I had to go through some pain just to get to this point, but it's always worth it always and we always have a choice sometimes people let pain you know harden them and they let it make them hate life and hate other people i just really don't think that you should let that happen hardening yourself doesn't do anything for you doesn't do anything for the people around you and your loved ones it just creates distance between you and another person it creates distance between you and you and you never want to be disconnected from yourself i highly recommend taking the road less traveled which is to feel more be more vulnerable level up like choose to level up and i mean level up spiritually the spiritual wisdom that i have now is so priceless i don't think anything material could ever replace the spiritual knowledge and the love that I have learned and grown and created and cultivated. Like nothing will be the spiritual lessons that I have learned. Nothing in this earthly realm will ever be that. We sometimes get confused and think all the material things are the most important, you know, like having the nice house and the nice job and the nice car and making all this money and being able to buy this and that. And that's fun too. We're literally here on earth to experience earth. That's a part of the journey. And I love that. I love some luxury items, okay? I love that. But I know that that is not the main goal. I know that that's not the most important thing. And I'm so glad that I'm aware of that because, you know, a lot of people can get mixed up in that. And if you love material stuff, love that. I am not gonna stop you. I am not gonna shame you. I just think that 
you can enjoy it a little bit more when you have that spiritual connection and when you understand that everything is deeper than it appears and nothing is really surface level with the way earth is created and the way that things are going in life my spiritual journey has helped me see things through the eyes of god it's helped me see myself through the eyes of god see how the world works through the eyes of god and that has been one of the biggest and most rewarding changes that i have seen in myself i am also just way more hopeful i have so much more faith i really believe that everything is working out for me even when something happens that i wish wasn't happening i know that at the end of the day it's working out for me nothing ever happens to me it only happens for me now like i would say i'm not really a big religious person i think i can connect to people of many religions because i don't judge like i'm not judging you for your beliefs normally it's religious people who judge me because they think it's like woo woo stuff you know witchy or whatever they hear the word ritual and they get scared as if they don't have their own rituals but personally i feel like religion can be very divisive and i told you i'm not about competition i'm not about division like i don't i don't appreciate that and so with religion it can be very like my way or the highway like there's only one religion that's right and i just don't think that i think that everyone is going to have their own spiritual beliefs their own religious beliefs and that's okay it's whatever works for you as long as you're not harming anyone making anyone feel bad you know or you know putting anyone in harm's way including yourself i love it for you and i feel like that's how it should be if you've made it to the end of this video thank you so much for tuning in for listening to me share my story for giving me a safe space to share and for being a part of my community if you're not a part of my community and you'd like to be feel free to subscribe remember to like this video so that you know it helps with the youtube algorithm and it helps me reach my community because i'm really on this journey of you know connecting with others and creating an authentic community where we help each other and we support one another and we share our experiences. We are vulnerable with each other. And sometimes it feels really hard to be vulnerable, especially online, but we're combating that this year and we're being consistent. I saw I had a new subscriber and they said, I hope you're consistent. And I was like, girl, me too. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. That's what we're working towards. So thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you all have a beautiful day. And just remember that if you are going through it right now, know that you will get through it god is always on your side you have spirit guides a spiritual team you have your ancestors like everything you're going through is so much bigger than you and i just hope you understand that don't take it too personal you are the one that's going through it but don't take it too personal because we all as human beings go through a journey a spiritual journey or some type of journey on earth and it's always bigger than us it's always bigger than us so if you are going through it right now or if you are in the middle of spiritual awakening i am sending you so much love and so much light and i am rooting for you because you can do this and you will do this and if you have undergone a spiritual awakening or you'd love to share your spiritual journey, please leave a comment, like let me know. I love conversing, I am a Gemini. Gemini Sun, Gemini Mercury, like let's get into it, okay? But have a beautiful day and just be the beautiful light that you are, okay? I love you guys and I'll see you in the next video.